Our guests today are a trio of Sherman and Sterling partners up in New York City, Richard Alsop, Jillian Emmett Muldowen, and Christina Trauger, who are part of a team that authored the 18th Annual Corporate Governance and Executive Compensation Survey. That survey covers the top 100 public companies by market cap and revenue. It's quite an undertaking. Thank you for doing it. I'm Brock Romanek today on Zippy Point. So board role trends. This is, of course, a big topic. The board has been evolving. There's more responsibility than ever for the board. Um, but what have companies actually doing? The 18th annual survey will tell us. I'm going to start off. Richard's going to start us off by talking about what what you guys found in your 18th annual survey. Richard, thanks, Brock. Um, great to be on. And um, yeah, we um, you know we were very focused on this because it was. Um, you know, even before COVID-19, it was an exciting topic and, and one of great interest. Um, you know, I guess the seminal development in the last year that characterizes uh, the shift in thinking around the role of the corporation is the business roundtable statement that was published in August 2019, um, which was sort of a turning point uh, in governance at, at, in the sense that for the first time, more than 180 key business leaders embraced uh, the concept of stakeholder governance um, in um, you know what was a seeming rejection of the traditional shareholder primacy model um, and named customers, employees, suppliers, and communities in addition to the company's shareholders as key stakeholders and made specific references to the importance of sustainability and diversity of, and inclusion um, you know as goals for the the, the company. Um, not that this was a complete surprise. I mean, there, there has obviously been a lot of discussion around um, the role of the corporation, um, you know, and there was a backdrop of, of developments, um, including, um, you know, increasing pressure from investors and shareholders to make pub public disclosures around ESG matters uh, and efforts to try to standardize how those disclosures are made so as to increase comparability. Um, as well as an increasing acceptance um, by most corporations at some level that these disclosures have now become essential uh, and more and more interest around what they should be and what they should look like. Um, there have also been a lot of calls from notable institutional investors uh, to adopt a governance model that takes into account the interests uh, of a broader set of stakeholders. Um, for example, um, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink has been a vocal proponent uh, for a number of years of the need for corporations to think about long-term performance and the role of co the corporation in society. Um, in his most recent annual letter, uh, which actually predated COVID and, and the, you know, uh, this, this interesting year, um, it, you know, he urged a commitment um, to stakeholders arguing that the purpose that purpose itself is an engine of long-term profitability for corporations. Um, and this message linked long-term corporate performance and a sustainable business model to key social challenges such as climate change. Uh, Fink has also pushed for comparability of ESG disclosures by urging companies to publish disclosures in accordance with industry-specific SASB guidelines by the end of this year. Um, State Street, another major institutional investor, separately urged companies to improve ESG scores under its own proprietary system, um, which is based on it and SASB standards, uh, and incorporate ESG um, issues into corporate strategy. Um, the Council of Institutional Investors um, came out with its own set statement after the business round table statement, arguing um, for the more traditional shareholder primacy model and making traditional arguments that companies are not good at public policy, um, at implementing public policy, and they have to be accountable to someone and that accountability to everyone is essentially accountability to no one. Um, but large institutional shareholders that, like BlackRock and State Street and others seem to have enough confidence um, given their size um, in their ability to influence companies towards success without keeping the board narrowly focused on short-term shareholder value. Um, also, the genie, I feel like the genie is sort of out of the bottle and to some extent, stakeholder governance provides companies with a convenient argument against short-termism 
um, that they claim is the hallmark of shareholder activism. Um, on the other hand, you know, the natural extension of these trends, um, I think, are growing expectations that boards and C-suites have to be more involved in social and political issues and take a, and take a more public position um, about those um, issues. Um, you know, the emphasis on the culture wars and the constant barrage of highly contentious social issues in the last several years has forced them to increasingly take a stand or at least think about the implications of political developments for customers, their brand, human capital, and communities. Uh, and then, you know, in 2020, we had COVID-19, um, the social justice movement, Black Lives Matter, um, and that has all demanded tons of attention from, you know, boards uh, and C-suites. It's really dr driving home the fact that, um, you know, the days of corporate objectivity um, and detachment from those kinds of issues um, may be over. And it's interesting, Richard, as you talk about all of this, the really um, expansive role the directors are playing now in all these different areas and their expanded mandate. And perhaps you'll touch on that more, but I think from a comp perspective, it's interesting to look at what the trends are in director compensation as we start to see you know, additional special award provisions sometimes in plans and thinking about how that interplays with the litigation that was prominent in the last couple of years regarding entire fairness issues and whether directors are being overcompensated. But it, so you really do see in a lot of these areas you're speaking about an expanded role for the directors. Great stuff. So look for the other videos by the Sherman and Sterling team. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.